Uh, hey guys, I'm Tetsuo Hatanaka. I've been I've been rep with Prestige for a couple of years, but I didn't really take it seriously probably until about 20, 2021 and really starting to invest my time and energy to figure this beautiful industry called Hollywood. Yeah, let's talk about commercials and print. Uh, but more importantly, let's talk about the process of auditioning, booking. Um, believe it or not, there is a process and there is a pattern. And I will show them to you as with all the knowledge and experience I've accumulated so far. And I've probably accumulated that much. But that much makes that much of a difference. So let's do it. Let's start with mindsets. You know, one thing you want to remember is we're human beings before occupation. So it doesn't matter what position anybody is, whether you're the executive producer, the clients, or you're the grip, the lighting, the PA, you should treat people fairly as human beings with and my thing is always being from love service and kindness uh, it goes a long way and i'll expand more on that later generally when a project gets green light greenlit they have a problem they need to cast this part they need to find this person this man or woman to fill this slot to bring this story alive and that applies for both movies, films, commercial, print. They're looking for the person that will bring the story to life. Um, and it's your job to solve their problems. Your goal, you want to book at least one person in that room to be a fan of you, to fight for you. So this has been probably the biggest difference in my game. There's going to be a director. There's going to be a producer. There's a casting director, there's a session director, there's clients that you don't see their faces because they black out their Zoom screens. There are people watching you. And your job is to make at least one person to be a fan of you. And I I say this because I, uh, you know, people have fought for me. And they tell me this either on set or either after the project, um, whether it's a producer, someone's going to fight for you especially if they like you, they will fight for you. All right, mindset. When you look at a brand, you want to understand what this brand is. And you want to understand what they're, what they're trying to convey, what they're, what they're selling. What, what is the emotion they're trying to convey or you know want to convey? If you're looking at something like Mercedes-Benz, Chances are, you know, I think everybody can unanimously agree. It's going to be a little more luxe. It's got a little more chic. It's going to be a little more sexy. It's got to be a little more, you know, a nice, clean elegance. Uh, and you want to be able to portray that in that, in that uh, brand. Sometimes a brand might be known for a specific emotion or an essence. And they might want to cater to a different audience, maybe like a younger crowd. When it comes to a brand, I will find out who the target audience is and being brand specific. And then once you understand that, you could really uh, give them what they need. Stereotype of the current market. So yeah, this kind of goes back to the current market. The market does change. Uh, you want to understand how the consumers accept products and services. You know, what commercial was 10, 15 years ago is not the same as what it is today. And today's current market in commercial in print is definitely more natural. It's organic. Nothing is pushed. It's just like a day-to-day -day life. You know, I could just pick up this pen and pull this cap off. And that's the campaign. It's really that organic. So that's 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 the current market right now. But it does change. So keep an eye, be aware of where the market goes. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Tatsuo Hatanaka, non-union. I'm based in Los Angeles, California. Tell us something about yourself. Sure. I think I was about eight years old. I told my mother, mom. I want to be a samurai. Her smart nose was like, well, you already are. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, you're great, 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 
great-great-grandmother was related to the last samurai. So I guess that makes me a great-great-great-great nephew of the last samurai. This is a true story. Katsuo Hatanaka, Los Angeles, California. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So those are two examples of a self tape. Um, very different self tapes, very different, similar age range, similar, um, similar essence, but diff definitely a different, um, mark, a uh, different uh, product. Sell, we're selling two different products. Uh, one's for Duracell, one's for Kohl's. So let's kind of break this down in terms of self tapes. In commercial, we're generally anything that is more camera work. Um, you want to be still and subtle. And I say this because in commercial, in when when there's a camera present, you have a frame. So in this case, you see my shoulder and my head. That's about it. So the more still you are, and the more subtle you are, the more it will read to an audience. And uh, I'll break that down more. Um, but subtlety is really key with commercial. And it's the more subtle and still you are, the more commanding you are, I would say. So when you're in a tight shot like this, not only you want to be still and subtle, you want to act with your eyes. Um, how do you convey emotions when you can't see your body, but you only see your face? They're, they're going to ask you a lot of emotions. Uh, it's very vague directions. Very vague. And it's very common. They're going to say stuff like, be happy, be sad, be concerned, be worried. And that's your job to convey what they need because sometimes they don't know how to they don't know how to you know communicate that to an actor but you as an actor or a performer a model need to understand how to give them what they need so a good example is if i want to think about something happy with my eyes right i might think about my dog because it's a real thought you know when i think about my dog you could just, it just puts a big smile on my face. And this is just, this, just having that thought and idea will convey that emotion through your eyes. So going back to framing, you know, again, it goes back to, you know, auditioning, audition tapes, casting will ask you for a close up shot. Usually the most common is a closer shot, close up shot, a middle, and a full body. So, you want to understand the technicality of that framing. So kind of going back to this framing, this is a more of a close-up shot. If whatever I'm doing down here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something right now, but it's not on the camera. You're not going to see it. The audience, whoever's watching this is not going to see it. So if you want to, you know, show that you're doing something, it has to fit in the frame. Uh, without being at too being at too distracting, so keep that in mind. Framing 
perform towards the lens. So this is a big one. This is this this was a and when it comes to commercial and print, this is it. This was a game changer. And, and the reason why I tell you this, naturally, you know, we're told to, you know, talk to someone off camera, right? Like we'll have a dialogue. And um, most of you guys was, can tell that I'm probably talking to someone if I'm looking at this angle. But if I'm talking to the lens, I'm talking to you, right? One on one. You'll see me. Uh, use your intuition on this part because they will give you different directions. A uh, casting director or a director on set will give you different directions. But generally, when you're talking, when you're speaking to someone, it's this connection right here with the lens. So know where the lens is. Casting directors and clients, and sometimes directors, are going through hundreds, sometimes thousands of tapes. And they just got, they just don't have time to watch everybody's tapes like that. So make it straight to the point. Give them what they want, what they ask for. Nothing more, nothing less. Straight to the point. So if you have to edit it, I would highly recommend editing it as short, concise as possible. Most importantly, don't be boring. That is probably the biggest crime you could commit as a performer, as an entertainer. Um, everybody has their niche on being entertaining. And that's up to you to figure out how you can make an impact on that. And so there, there's this famous saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. That is the darn truth. It is just, that is just the truth. Uh, there are people who are jaded about that. That's okay. But you can't change that. It's, it's inevitable. This, that, that is an inevitable fact. Who you know is, is your probability of booking, whatever it is, whatever, whatever opportunity the probability is much higher when you know people. Reputation is very important. You want to be cognizant about how people perceive you in a very authentic way. It ha you know, um, And that's up to you to decide how you want to convey that. You want to be incredibly cognizant and aware of your own reputation because it takes years to build one. It takes like five seconds to destroy it. So keep that in mind. Cast and directors, they go through thousands of thousands of actors and models. You know, if you make their lives easier, they will remember you because they can rely on you. Be reliable is what I say. Uh, just be aware of the conversation you hold. It's just just be aware. It's it's human nature that people do judge, um, whether it's the truth or not, you know. It's just human nature. People do, even if you're, if they see you from a distance, even if they don't know you, they'll judge you. It's, you know, just be aware of that. So, and whenever you work for a big client like Adidas or Amazon or Meta, there will always be one person from the marketing team who will vet you. And what I mean by that is they will do a thorough check on you, on who you are, make sure you are not a liability, make sure you are. You know, they just want to make sure that they hired the right person they can work with. They want to make, they just want to make sure you want to make sure that you are truly the solution to their problem that they need to solve. They will look at your social media. They will do a thorough background check on you, um, whether through, it's through a website, definitely through Google. They will look you up. You know, they will find you. <laughs> and I only know this because they told me this. Lastly, your job is to do the audition, not just booking it. People get really attached to the idea of booking. Um, that's not the job. That's the vacation. You know, that once you're once you booked it, you're 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 it's vacation time, you know? It's fun. It's just all fun. You really have to love what you hate doing, as someone once told me. Um having the discipline to be consistent and persistent. And so be consistent because your job is to do the audition. It's not about booking it. That's, that's, that's the cherry on top. You have your job's to audition. That's your job. Whether you love it or hate it, that's your job. Um, so learn to love your job if you can. Otherwise you might have to find something else. That is the truth.
there is an option to ex to to request extensions, and you know, for whatever reason, you have you have your personal life. You know, there are times where you will have a conflict on getting an audition by deadline. Uh, extensions are just it's just yeah, it's I wouldn't recommend it, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Be first and be best. So, from a casting director standpoint, the they're one the, the second you submit they're gonna look they're gonna review it pretty fast probably within the next couple hours or within 12 no more than 24 hours they're gonna review it very fast what happens is there's gonna be about 50 let's say a 50 to 100 tapes right if they find the answer to their problem by tape four they're gonna skip the rest of the 96 um i know this because again Someone told me this, you know, someone told me that, yeah, we saw your first, we saw the first tape on the audition. You were first and we just, we just went with you because you were it, you know, um, this is very true. Clients tell me this, casting directors tell me, tell me this. So I only say this because it is just a, just a matter of fact. So be first and be best. Um, I would say both. You could be the best and be last, and they might even not get to your tape. This this happens. And you could be first, and you could have a pretty mediocre tape, and they'll skip you. So make, you know, make an effort to get in a quality tape as fast, fast as possible. The faster, the better. There's a big difference between four minutes to four hours, you know? And in a business like this that moves very fast, the more time efficient for them, the more time it saves, the more money they save, the more energy they save. So be first and be best. Do you want casting directors to rely on you? Like the second they hear your name, um, you want them to think, oh yeah, like that guy's reliable. He's gonna have a good tape, he's gotta get it on time. And it's presentable to a client, right? Presentable to a client. They don't, they're not gonna show an amateur tape to a to a big paying client like Amazon or you know Meta they just won't because it's it's a it's not professional and b it's embarrassing and there's a lot of money involved so be professional be persistent so casting directors every casting directors have their own process and every, all their processes are different they're going to ask for different direction they're going to ask for different formats just because one casting director asks you for one way, uh, it's not you not it's not universal to the the rest of the casting director. There, every casting director has their own process. If they ask you for thirty seconds, you only give them thirty seconds. If they ask you for fifty megabytes, you give them fifty megabytes, and, and very specific instructions. You give them exactly what they need. So communication that can be you know that could sound pretty vague. But what that means is there's never too much communication in this industry. Um, you might think that you might be annoying. You might think you might be a burden or a nuisance. But in this industry, the more communication, the more specific, the more clear you are, the better the terms. You want to be on the same page with your agent. A good example is um, so Patty. <laughs> Patty knows my whole life, right? Like I tell her everything. I'll, I'll go through like a dramatic episode. And I'll tell her, Patty, I'm going through blah, 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 blah. And she understands. And based on my current predicament or situation or circumstance, you know, she can she can navigate. She is able to navigate me um, to put me where I need to be put in terms of auditioning or call, but whatever it is. Again, this is a long term business. You know, things change, whether it's your hair or your look, your essence, your brand. Sometimes you might rebrand yourself to something else. Um, you want to keep that updated to the current. When casting or clients look at your photo, they're expecting that. They're expecting that look. And if you come, <laughs> I've seen this, if you come in with like purple hair or like some, some, I don't know, they're going to be pretty upset. So give them what they what they saw in that photo, um, which is really why it's really important to be um, updating your material. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting technical uh, fundamental. You have a, a key light, which is your main light that highlights your face. So in my case, 
I'll give you a good example. You know, my key light is off. So obviously this kind of darkens my whole face. You're not gonna see my face. It's not as it's not gonna be as clear or legible. Um, the key light is your main light. That's what they call a key light. Hair light. Hair light is the light that is behind you. I have a lot of friends who book like crazy, who did who do not have hair lights. You do not need it. However, it does make a huge difference. What a hair light does is I don't know if you could tell, but there you see how there's some light on my shoulder, my the back of my head. Uh, it creates a separation with the backdrop, with the background. So it makes it more three-dimensional. It makes you look a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional screen. But the third option, it's optional. You don't need it. I'm saying this again, you don't need it. But it's a fill light. So when I turn this off, it darkens, right? But really simple. Just one key light, all right? Um, you don't need a hair light, you don't need a fill light, but it does make a difference on your image. You know, till this day, I would, I'm, there's a lot of people I work with on set that works for, um, do this for a living. And I ask for a lot of, you know, I, we exchange advice, we exchange information, you know, we'll talk about the market, we'll talk about casting director, we'll talk about the process, clients, we'll talk about everything. And you know, we exchange information, we keep in touch. I have a lot of friends who I, I have a lot of peers that I ask for advice. Two great people who are full-time working actor models. One is The Booker's Mentality with, by Nate Holston. He's repped by Daniel Hoff. This guy, we call him the booking machine. This guy books like crazy, right? Uh, him and I worked on a set a couple of years ago on, on a Google project, and we kept in touch. And this guy, this guy's game changer. I highly recommend this guy because he will deep he would give you a deep dive on auditioning, booking, the industry. He, he it's like this times like 10. He'll give you a very deep dive. I highly recommend him. You could just save this, message him, and he'll teach you everything about auditioning and booking. Uh Camille is another one. She and I worked on a project about a year. I think it was about a year ago, but she is another full-time um, commercial actress and model. She, I mean, she books like crazy. You see her on everything. And both of these people have created a platform to give advice and help other upcoming commercial actors, models, and actors. And um, there are two examples because they, they created an entity to help people. So that's why I mentioned these two people because A, there are living proof that they're working 100% full time. And B, I've worked with both of them. And they're real professionals. So that's why I would suggest these two. Um, if you want to get more training in commercial acting and modeling.